Dage defending Angus Brandt. Borland to Burton. Boy, he can score a lot of different ways. Up and over his head, reverse layups, and more. Big Joe, if he catches on the paint, he has a running hook. The turnaround jump shot. This guy has a three-point jump shot. They score from inside. They go outside. That's why you saw him score 90 points. That's why they're leading the conference in scoring this year. A lot of weapons. Now, Thursday night, Rich, Josh Owens for Stanford had a big first half. In the second half, he didn't get as many touches because of pressure like this, what they're seeing now, forcing you to put the ball on the court, have to drive, and their corner comes over and cleans it up. Well, Oregon State fans have seen this kid do this several times. No, he put the left hand on the glass, and I'm going to wait here for a second till my right hand catches up. For Oregon State, Eric Morland doesn't operate on that perimeter a whole lot. That's definitely a development of a game that he has to improve on. Kevin on the with the putback off the Burton missed hook. You know, they want to see the ball go in the, in the hoop early on, and if it didn't go in, you probably... The confidence did waver, but it wasn't as high as it would have been if it would have gone in. Talk about confidence, Jared Cunningham, nice runner in the lane. Cunningham defended by man. they try to stick to him like glue all night long. Joe Burton with a ball handling, and he is fouled. He'll have a chance at a three-point play. How about that for Big Joe? A lot of coaches like to settle on a, a seven to eight man rotation. And Oregon State have Devon Collier, a kid who started every game for you except Thursday, coming off the bench. A lot of firepower. And Roberto Nelson, who we just saw there, is also one of those guys coming off the firepower. Almost at will. And so if I'm them, I'm continuing to drive. Just got to take care of the ball once you get there. Back door underneath from Nelson to Collier, put it in. So you see here Roberto Nelson with a nice back cut. You got to defend him at the three point line to Devon Collier. The second best field goal percentage in the conference. Nelson doesn't get the roll, but Grant does get the putback. Roberto Nelson right now playing without his shoe. You see him over on the far side of the floor with a black sock. Is there he is shooting without a shoe. Got it. I have, I have never seen anything like that in my life. Hey, I don't know if it's a fashion statement or what, but. He's going to have all the kids watching this game right now wanting to do the, do the one shoe. This is one of those moments where you're, where you're asking yourself, is this really happening? Collier with the steal. There's been no stop in play. Nelson's still playing without a right shoe. Oh, he's got to shoot again. He's got to shoot again. Here he is. Got it! Unbelievable! I cannot believe what I've seen. Oregon State on the 10 Here's the first one, nothing but net, and likewise on number two. You see the excitement. I mean, like I said, this is one of those moments where you're like, is he serious? He's really transitioning from offense to defense, rebounding, shooting threes with no shoot. Against Stanford, Anthony Brown didn't draw iron. That's because Eric Borland was there, and even though he didn't get the block, he affects shots. Nice move by crowd favorite Kevin McShane. Grew up dreaming of playing for Oregon State. Martin finds Nelson. Got the roll. That's great movement. Charlie Barton drive draws and dishes, and then Roberto Nelson finishes it off. Anthony Brown won't fall. Here's Nelson, one on one with Brown. Way to hang in the air and put it in. That's a great finish. Roberto Nelson is not just a three-point shooter, he's a scorer. Burton finds Collier, they need it, he gets it. That's one of the reasons why Devon Collier is second in the conference of field goal percentage. He's always lurking around that basket. Great pass by Joe Burton. Blocked by Jared Cunningham. Out of bounds to Oregon State. Jared Cunningham so athletic. He was lucky because he went under that screen. I thought Bright was going to shoot the three, but Cunningham knows his athletic ability, and he knew he was able to catch up and get that block. Grass at the screen. Here's Cunningham. Oh, you slam dunk. And that gets some of the crowd on their feet. 
and limit his touches as much as possible. He has six points so far tonight. Josh Owen. Here's Angus Brandt over power. Angus. Nice touch, but he's making that shot. He's virtually unguardable. Here's Nelson over Anthony Brown. Got it! First up, Nelson! With a hand in his face and falling down. Right against Barton. Four to shoot. Dwight Powell gets the bucket. No, he doesn't! Offensive foul! It's just a nice pick and roll, a little slip. You didn't see that very much in the first half. Jared Cunningham, nice move. You know, this guy, he's not fatigued. I mean, he, he can go all night. And so that's why Jared Cunningham, he's got to be the catalyst. He's the leader of this team right now. He's the guy everybody looks up to. He's got to be the catalyst of the defensive movement that Oregon State needs. And so this is going to be one of those games that can go down to the wire. Starks. Very nearly drained that. That ball was halfway down the cylinder. Joe Burton from Ahmad Starks. No foul was called. The crowd is incensed. Starks with a takeaway. He's got Cunningham. Slams it home. Cunningham. Well, while the crowd is upset about the no call, Oregon State is still playing. To getting back to pressure in the ball the way they did in the first half. Owens tried to save it. He was falling OB. There's Oregon State three on two. Collier! Got it! And he'll go to the line! You know, you've heard the phrase athletic, athleticism. People said that this is the most athletic team Oregon State's had in years. And I don't remember the last time they had a four man that could run the court like that. Stanford has gone man-to-man -man almost exclusively. They had a possession or two earlier on with the zone. Joe Burton, nice little hook shot. If you give him the ball, he'll do some good stuff with it. Fall away. Ahmad Starks drains it. Scored us in the first half. And I said as long as they had Johnny Dawkins' resolve and his mental toughness, that they were going to be just fine. Burton from Starks. Finally, they get the ball that oh, they are used to, and they get the bucket. Foul on Anthony Brown. Taken nicely by Angus Brant. Second foul on Brown. Was able to sit there and set up whatever pass he wanted to make. And Miles Starks has to get more ball pressure there. Tip back up and in by Eric Borland. You either close down on him or you at least shade him. Where you're forced to pass away from the shooter. Rejection by Moreland, his first shot of the game. And a lot of driving and drawing and passing just over and over again. And when Josh Owens gets the ball, you have to pay extra attention to him. To tie it. Did he call bank or not? Angus Brandt. Did they call bank? It's not Sunday, but it is Saturday after hours. But he has his ATM card, Rich. You want to get a quality shot every possession. So Oregon State will go pick and roll with the Miles Starks, Angus Brandt. They don't hedge the screen like they did in the first half. And I'm on. Makes it count. Offensive foul on Aaron Bright. Charge taken by Angus Brandt. You maybe get him in his pick and roll. Call the switch like you have right now. Now right now, Miles Starks has to get the ball back to Brandt. Or... <laughs> You take a layup. That's not a bad shot, but you know what I'm saying, Rich, where if you get that switch and you can stick Angus Brandt on the block with Aaron Bright guarding him, you go to that. Great defense by Cunningham following Bright through the screen. Held ball. The arrow points Oregon State's way. Great defense by Devon Collier. Let's watch them go up together. Wow. Well, remember, Aaron Bright has four fouls. Let's see if they try to exploit that. 
Ahmad Stark, second time high off the glass. Well, in that last double overtime against Kansas State, back in my day, Rich, we ended up with the win. I know Oregon State's hoping for the same thing here, and I think this is how they're going to get it, putting the ball in that guy's hands because he makes plays. Joe Burton puts it in again. This time Ahmad Stark's created. We are going to a third overtime in Port Dallas. Great defense by Oregon State as Jason Randall tried to make something happen. Ahmad Starks has to match it. Do we have a fourth OT? Starks! Tipped by Burton! Angus Brad for the win! We are going to a fourth overtime in Port Dallas. Can you possibly imagine? Anthony Brown just basically gave Oregon State the ball back when he could have ran another 25 seconds off the clock. There's Roberto Nelson. Nice move. He got it. Nelson for a second. Yeah, he's the one that has to score. He's got to shoot right now. He was hot to start the game. It's not what you do at the start, though. It's how you finish. But if they do shoot a three, this is the guy you want shooting it. Roberto Nelson has the ball. And Nelson got the free throw line for three shots. He got Eustace in the air. That was the key. That's the guy you have to foul. That's who you want to foul. And they didn't do it. But they steal it. Cunningham. Won't go. Call your put back. Won't go. Eight seconds left. Can somebody please finish? One more. Two point lead. Here's Ahmad Starks, and timeout taken by Oregon State. They'll have two and a half seconds left. Expect Angus Brandt to go screen for Jared Cunningham, which he does. Here's Roberto Nelson for the win! No! And in quadruple overtime, Stanford beats Oregon State 103-101. And Lamar, they had a good look. They did. That was that was a very good look. I mean